Good afternoon. Well, so to speak, in between raindrops, I can't do anything outside. And uh, we got a heavy rainstorm coming tonight. Hopefully not a lot of wind. That's what I'm really worried about. Anyways, um, this is the 180A HP. This is the one I did not show on um, the last video. This one has sweep. So I'm going to just show you a little bit on it. This is the one that you already saw. This is the 180D down there. So um, I've got the bottom panel off of this. And um, I tried cleaning the switches. I found out what this is. This is... Uh, you pull out the plug-ins. Kind of a neat little thing. And um, I sprayed the switches as much as I could with the deoxid. And uh, got the, uh, you know, got in here and cleaned the uh, switches here. And got in here and cleaned this and so forth. But um, what I have to do, and you'll see that, I'm not going to disturb that. The beam finder button right here and the intensity control right behind it is very intermittent and um, when you touch it sometimes the trace will shift over left and right. A lot of times it will stay over to the right. There is sweep on this scope whereas the other one there is no sweep. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this top off and see if I can spray this intensity and beam finder control right here. It's very, very erratic. So hopefully it just needs cleaning. It might even have a bad solder connection. I don't know. If I can get in there, okay, I, <clears throat> I've, got the <clears throat> I've got the bottom panel off. And um, I checked up underneath here as much as I could. And there's really no way I can get in to replace the um, socket with a computer-type power jack. Because it's all enclosed in with the, all the framework and everything. And I have to move bo remove boards and it's it's j just about impossible. So I'm going to have to locate the proper cord for that. But I'm not spending an arm and a leg on a cord. So it's got these tiny little screws up on top here. So it's not hard to get the top off. And uh, I'll be working on that. Unless it starts pouring, then I'm going to get drenched. I'll have to quit. But right now, it's very, very light rain. So if the uh, rain holds off, I can uh, do some work on it. So without being long-winded, which is very, very hard for me not to do, I'm going to turn this on and show you what I got. It, there's a distortion on the left-hand side of the screen on the sweep. And I know it's not my signal generators. Because I've tried uh, the function generator. I've got this one and I've got that one. And the ICO 324, which has a harmonic, a horrible waveform. But the point is, uh, the left side of the trace uh, is odd. And I will show you that. But this does have um, a sweep. And as I'm moving the controls and spraying them, a lot of them I did them from from the uh, front in here, shooting the deoxid in here, and on these flip switches, and then cleaning out as much as I could by pulling this uh, plug-in and uh, time base generator out of the scope. I was able to clean a lot of them. I have not done anything with these. I think the problem mostly is here, and I'll show you that now. Okay, now... You see this little distortion here. Let's see here. 
All right, we'll get you in here. Now, this intensity is quite low, but I want to show you something here. If I can get in so you can see my finger here. Control needs cleaning, but see how it happens? See how it switches over? And then when I hit the beam finder, if I play around with this enough, it'll jump back over. But you can see that distortion there on the left-hand side of the trace. Well, now it isn't. It's got a bad spot in it, see? It just goes away, see? So when I turn this horizontal positioning control over, See how that is? All right. Now, see how that went over it's the, over to the left? Now it's back to full screen, but it is distorted right there. So this has problems. What kind of problems? I don't know. But it's got plenty of intensity. The focus is great. But it has sweep and the other one doesn't. And it has triggering. Let's see if I can, there's a trigger here. All right. All right, see that? The trigger's good, but look at the left hand side, look at the left hand side of the trace there. So you can probably see that better if I bring you over to a little bit off to the right here and I'm going to move the um, trigger level control here you see how that is and it's only on the left hand side if you bring it over like this so that this is kind of like not over to the right but it looks clean here in other words if you kind of like Turn that out of sight, so to speak. See, now it looks normal. See, it's a straight edge right here. Now, let's see now. Okay. There's a little... Harmonic in there, interference or something. Uh, you can see that on the magnification right there. But that might be the function generator. You know, I get those from eBay, and, you know, there's probably little problems with them. They're not really perfect. But this bothers me here. Now, I'm going, I'm going to put the ICO 324 through this, and we'll put the ICO 324 on. Um, we got it on band D, e, and we're on 3738 megacycles. So probably the highest band D e will go is 37 megacycles, but it actually goes a little beyond that. So, so this is pretty much on. This is off just a little bit, but very, very little. Um, but it's pretty much on and on most of the bands. So I'm going to transfer the coaxial cable over to here. We want to let this warm up. Okay, here is the waveform, 37 megacycles. This uh, this scope, uh, I looked it up, and thanks to some of my viewers for giving me the information. Uh, this is a uh, an 801A uh, dual channel vertical amplifier, um, 50. 50 megahertz, I think. Yeah, 50, right there. Uh, there is a problem. It's shifted to the right. As the, I gotta, I gotta hit the beam finder. Then it brings it over there. But it's, it's erratic. There's a problem in this control. So, once again, bring it over here. But I wanted to show you
and see if I can get the volts per division so you can see it. See it's erratic on the left side. It's fluctuating and I don't know if that's my signal generator or the scope. I would kind of believe that it's the scope. But there's a problem when I'm tapping on this very gently. This is the beam finder. There's a button right here. But behind this button is the intensity control. It's all the way down and it doesn't knock it completely out. My Navy oscilloscope's the same way. It doesn't knock it all the way out when you turn the intensity down. But that has, that has issues and I had to make a little modification to get that to work. Uh, but it's kind of like... If I hit the beam finder very gently, now you see what happens? It goes to the left now. Now I can bring it over with my positioning control. But you look at the left hand side of the waveform. See how it's spread out there? And I'm adjusting the trigger level now. So this scope has issues. I doubt very highly I'll be able to fix them, but the only thing I'm going to do, though, is I'll take this top cover off and I'll spray this control and try to spray whatever I can, if I can get in here. I have no idea if I can get in there or not. So I shut down the scope. And um, I'm going to shine a light in here. And I might be able to get at the uh, intensity control. Of it. Hopefully I can get in at the back end of it either by removing this or removing the top. All right. Uh, the beam finder switch is way up on the top. And I had three lousy little flashlights that hardly lit at all. Those little cheapy junky ones, you know, the little tiny ones I use, they're no damn good. They just, you have to keep banging them to make them work, and then they don't give you enough light, so I had to use my good LED plug-in light here. I didn't even notice that uh, little switch up there, but um, when you push the beam finder button, that activates those uh, gold contacts up there, and below that, that potentiometer with the uh, silver back and the blue plastic, that's your uh, intensity control. So I sprayed those with deoxid. So we're going to fire this back up now and see, um, let's see what it does here. I don't know what this stuff is. I don't know what this black thing is. It looks like a switch, but it's not. Um... It is uh, the focus controls. Anyways, I'm not having a problem with the focus control. I'm only having trouble with an intermit on the uh, beam finder and intensity. So I'm not sure. I, I hit that a few times with um, deoxid, but I don't really know if I got any inside of it. I can't tell with my bad eyesight. If that's a sealed pot, the terminals are facing me, so that's where I sprayed, and hopefully it got in there. I tried doing it from the shaft end on the outside. That did nothing. All right. Uh, here's the beam finder. Well, now it's behaving better. It's not shifting so far. Because I can just tap on this before and it was all erratic. Now, all I did is spray that little uh, switch way up in the top for the beam finder. Uh, I didn't try to run anything to it to, to clean it up other than uh, just spraying it with deoxid. In other words, a burnishing file which I'd have to locate and see if I can still find it. Okay, but you still got this oddball stuff going on in the beginning of the trace the sweep and that 
It's still erratic though. See, I've got the intensity all the way down. I'm bringing it up. No change, I'm still bringing it up. Now it, it, there's a bad spot right there. So obviously I didn't get any spray in that. Might have to drill a hole in the pot in order to get it in. It's, as I, okay, I turn it up here, but when I go higher, you see, you get a bright line here. So, and I turn this horizontal positioning control, it moves properly. So the only complaint I got is the most problem is this part of the trace. But I'm no engineer and I don't know that much about it. Uh, I would imagine it's probably an unlinear trace at the start of the sweep. A very interesting phenomena. Take a look at this trace on the left hand side. When I move the inner knob, which is a switch, to the right position, you get that separation there. See that? Move it back, goes away. I'll move the trace over so that I can verify that there's nothing beyond that on the left hand side. You got a nice trace. Now this is 37 megacycles going in and the sweep rate is all the way up. Oh no, I'm sorry. Now it's all the way up. Okay, it's it's at the max, which uh, I'd have to look on the uh, the time base to see where the switch is and where I'm at, the angle at which I'm at. I can't tell you right now. But the outside knob here, and I got to really study the book on this, thanks to some of my viewers. Um, I got some information. Uh, one is a very clear um, operator's book, and the other one, I don't remember which, is very, very hard and faint and hard to read. Uh, one was on the 180A, and the other one was on the 180D, and I'm not sure offhand. I have to go back into the house. But let me move this knob here again. Let me get you right down here so you might be able to see that. Uh, I'm not sure how these knobs work. The outside changes the sweep, but if I move this inside one here to the right, it only goes two positions, left and right. Now look at the screen. It's on the left now. I'm going to turn that outside knob to the right. And you can see the trace, how it pulls out like a spring, you know. Uh, in other words, there's an, a problem with the sweep. But if I put it this way, it seems to be okay. And looking at the right-hand side, that looks good too. So uh, let's see if we can get this back down here. Everything works good. Hopefully you can still see that. I'm on macro. Hopefully it's in focus. Uh, all right, I'm moving the outside knob. But now, when I move this outside knob here, I lost all my trace. In other words, the time base will not show a high frequency. Okay, but if I move the middle knob, it does. Oh, I see what it's doing. Moving the outside knob to the left, okay, I really need to study the book on this. Moving the outside knob to the left, also moves the inside knob to the left. So when you put this back to the right, this knob here. All right. When you move, let's take.
take this inside the second knob, not the outside one, the middle one. When I turn it to the right, I get my waveform uh, plainly right here. Okay. All right, now, okay. This inside knob is all the way to the right. Okay. So if I turn the inside knob, the middle knob, I'm going to say not the inside knob, I'm sorry, the middle knob. This is the outer knob. This is a two-position switch here, and I really don't know what that is. Uh, I have to look at the book. Then there's a middle knob and then an outside knob. It's a little confusing to use. Okay, so if I take this outside knob and turn it to the left, it moves the inside knob too. And I move it all the way to the left. And the trace is actually gone. Actually, the trace is not gone. It just went off the screen. Okay, so there's my time base, okay? That I understand. Okay, but what, what's throwing me off here is, and I'm very hot. I got, I got a coaxial cable that's preventing me from pulling this camera back so I can get a good view of this. Um, so if I move this to the right now, this middle knob is not moving. So I'm still getting the slow. I move it all the way to the right. This is here, but this isn't moving. When you turn this to the left, and this knob turns to the right, it will turn with it to the left. Okay? If you understand. You guys that are familiar with this particular scope might understand what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across. Works different. I'm not used to this type of setup. Right now, I'm just getting this, and I have to keep adjusting this back down to the middle of the screen. All right, so if I want to get that up, I got to turn the middle knob back up, all right, all the way over, and there's my 37 mega cycle signal. And then when I take this outer knob right here and turn it to the right, don't touch anything else. I'm getting this. Now maybe this is normal. I don't know why it would be normal. Um, some of those PDF files are the faint. The text is so faint on it that I cannot read it. I have a lot of problems with that. I don't know if it's my browser or what it is, but it's very, 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 very faint uh, to read. The other manual, and I'm not sure which manual is which because they're in the house and I got them both downloaded. But anyways, so I turn this back to the left, the outer knob. Okay, the middle knob is all the way to the right and I'm getting the waveform I showed you. Okay, but if I was to turn this outer control, the inner one, the middle one moves with it. See, and I moved it two positions now. Now, if I move this back over, this don't move over. This stays there. So I have to move the middle knob back over. All right. Anyways, that's an issue. But right now it's looking it's looking good, and I hit the bead finder again. But you notice when I hit the beam finder, because of the signal in it, it's still going to show something there. It's brighter on the left-hand side of the trace than on the right. But I turn the brightness. The brightness control is still not performing the way it should. The focus is pretty good. All right. Now, let's see if I can get, um, I got the time base all the way up, so let's see if I can.
It's supposed to be a 50 megahertz scope. So. Okay, it triggers right there. Now, another issue I found. All right, you see where this is triggered? When I move this trigger control, it's supposed this trigger light is supposed to light when it's triggered. But it, when you turn this, this is supposed to be lit saying that you're triggered. Okay? But that's not the case. Watch. The light come on now. See it? Nothing on the screen. But the light is lit. The light is not lit, but it's triggered. The light is lit. I mean, not lit. It's triggered. So, in other words, right here it's supposed to be triggered. There's nothing on the screen. A beam finder will show it, but... There is nothing on the screen because it's not triggered, even though the light's saying you're triggered. And this, okay, this push, I push this button there, and this is a reset. Now it's, tri now it's triggered, but the light's not lit. The light is lit, not triggered. If I hit this, it's a reset. It says reset. Okay, this time nothing happens. It will only trigger with the light off, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I don't think there's a lot of issue with this. Maybe these switches need cleaning. But anyways, as you can see, this scope is working. And we'll put another waveform on here and see if we still get a good waveform with my function generator. Okay, I'm getting a good waveform. I moved it over to the right here. Let me just move this down a little bit. Okay. Let's center it. I didn't adjust the time base. I need to do that now. Okay, let's drop that over to there. And let's move this over. Now, pay attention to this leading edge here. I'm going to flip this switch to the left, this outer button, outer switch, I should say. No, to the right, I'm sorry. See that? See that distortion? Now I'm going to move that outer switch to the left, gone. To the right, back there again. To the left, gone. Okay, I don't know what that is, and I got to look at that there might be something on the end of this knob which came off that might tell you what that is. It doesn't push in, it doesn't pull out. Okay? So, it's a usable scope if I don't turn this switch, because if I turn this switch, I get that distorted waveform on the leading edge. So if I leave this switch over to the left, I get a good normal looking waveform. I got the intensity all the way down on the scope. And uh, it won't go down any more than that. But when there's a signal, it will go down. So there's an issue here still. Hopefully I got some close-ups on this. Uh, Especially if somebody has this particular scope and is familiar with its operation. Now, you can see now the trigger light is lit. Normally, when that's lit, and it says it's, it's triggered, nothing appears on the screen. But obviously, you can see that it is. Now it's performing good, like it's supposed to. As I can get my arm in an awkward angle here, you see the trace? And when I turn, 
and the light goes out, it's not triggered. That's the way it's supposed to work. Then the light is on, it's triggered. Well, the problem is in the scope for um, this business, okay? On the left-hand side, you can see it on the square wave. It's squared off here. It's not squared off here. But when I turn it here, now it are both are identical. So, uh, anyways, that's it on this. The next thing I'm going to do is, like I say, I'm going to clean this as much as I can. And i got to find out why I can't get the intensity to go down anymore. And if anybody has any answers as to why this switch, let me try to get you a little closer here. And this video is getting to be too damn long. All right, I'm on macro here. And uh, I'm going to try to read that book, but it's very hard to uh, read it because the text is very faint when they describe certain things and show pictures and so forth. But the, uh, here's the close-up of the knob. And uh, that's where I got the issue with that distortion on the left-hand side of the screen. So anyways, okay, so that's, that's the story there, everybody. Thanks for watching.